And welcome once again. We were discussing about computer diagrams. And I, as I specified before, how to read diagrams for computers. Like I said, concentrate on one system that you are having the trouble with. Multi, multi systems are involved with these um, powertrain control module. This is called powertrain control module, and it's abbreviated PCM. Now, sensors are involved with computers. Okay, giving information as to the previous status, what's going on, the quality of air, the temperature of the air, how much air, temperature, transmission fluids, all these things have to be known by the computer for them to make a decision when to activate a motor, when to activate an actuator, when to activate a fuel pump. Those things are taken into account by the computer. The computer is the brain of the gang so in other words if he has to give a ground to a relay <clears throat> it's based upon factors of let's say the starter motor let's say the fuel pump the fuel pressure all these things are taken into consideration and are in a programming of which he responds to so let's go over these are all Connectors over here. These are the these are the actual what the connector is responsible for, or what this wire is for. Now, all other diagrams you have numbers of the connectors here. You don't have that. This is from a manual I know, that I said the Haynes manual, and they do say the colors. So therefore. There's a there's a positive and there's a negative. The positive is these are easier to read for for beginners, like I always stressed. But if you want to go to the connector number, you won't find here. There's no there's only colors. So let's say we're looking for something. Let's say, for example, let's say we're looking for a brown wire air pump. Okay, this is the connector. We have a we think we have a problem with the air pump. We go for the brown wire. Now, if you notice, if you go to, look, go to look for the brown wire, guess what? There's another brown wire. And if you go to go look for a white wire, guess what? There's another white wire. Easy to make a mistake. So what do you do? If there's a brown wire right next to it, there should be a dark green slash white stripe wire. And on the other one, there should be a tan and a black stripe wire. So therefore, you know at least these three wires, this is the right brown wire. If I, here's a white wire here's a white wire how do i know which if i'm going to the correct one if i choose this white wire over here i'm going to have a red one next to it i'm going to have a brown ne next to it if i'm going to choose this white wire because i'm worried about the evap vent system i have to look for a brown next to it and a yellow and a black stripe wire next to it that's what makes it a little difficult with this diagram so let's say we're looking if we have, we believe we have a problem with the air conditioning system. Am I going to go and be worried about all 200 pins? No reason to. I only am involved with the air conditioning, whatever has to do with the air conditioning system. So let's say air conditioning system over here. Recirculating switch. Yes, that has something to do with the system that I'm troubleshooting. A cruise control system. No, that has nothing to do with it. Starting charging system? No, that has nothing to do with it. Air conditioning system request? Yes, that has nothing to do with it. Recirculating door? Yes, that has something to do with it. Fuel pump? That has nothing to do with my problem of air conditioning. Right? Let's continue. Air conditioning system, this one. Clutch? Yes, that has something to do with air conditioning. Over here? Cruise control, instrument cluster, nothing to do with what I'm, I'm dealing with. Air conditioning system, yes. Once we go to the actual air conditioning system schematic, we it'll bring us back to here, to the computer. It'll bring us back to, let's say, the dark blue wire, or it'll bring us back to air conditioning request. We'll come back to these things. And that's what you stress yourself. This is what I'm going to be paying attention to. Only what has to do with my problem. Let's say we are dealing with a starting charging system. The computer controls the alternator. 
and the computer can give a ground to the relay to activate the starter motor. Now, <clears throat> when I come to all this, as I, as the first thing I see is a big computer in front of me, right? Uh, do I have to be worried about other systems? No. I think I believe I have a problem with the starting system. I believe a relay is not being triggered on. <clears throat> therefore... That system that is a charging system will bring me back to this. So therefore, I only deal with this on the computer. I'm not involved now with the air conditioning system as I was before. I'm not worried about an anti-lock brake system. I'm not worried about a cruise control system. So break it down into sections, break it down into parts. My, my problem that I'm dealing with... And what is connected to? Where is the system on this huge PCM connected to? So therefore, let's take this. I believe I don't have spark. Here's a spark plug, right? Here's ignition coil. How many cylinders can you see from this? If there are eight ignition coils, how many cylinders can there be? It has to be a V8. Eight cylinders. Okay, now, to stress another point, when you come to computers, when you come to all these, any diagram that you go over, it will not show you the flow or it will not give you which is the input, which is the output that I've stressed so many times. This is where your creativity as a technician, as a diagnostic technician, settles in. And you have to make an assumption and you have to go with that assumption to see if it makes sense. It does not tell, just because over here you see an arrow going out, doesn't mean it's an output. Just just because over here doesn't mean it's an output. Just to see over here doesn't mean it's an output. Those things will trick you. So let's go back to the ignition coil. Ignition coil, okay? First thing, we have to have a B plus for sensors, for anything ignition coil. We always have to have a B plus. So, Where's the B plus? When you see ignition IGN over here, which is going to another page, that's a 12 volts. As I put up here, 12 volts. So it's coming in, 12 volts is coming in. Now you have a ground. This is a ground symbol, it's a ground. Now you have a spark plug. So what's the output? This is the output of the ignition coil module. This is what gives the high voltage. So, a low reference, if you go back and you see, it goes to the computer reference low. So it gives it like a ground. Remember, there are many components in here. You're not going to see it as a symbol. You're going to see one single module, a coil, as the symbol for it. So we have to control the ignition when you get the spark. Who do you think does that? The computer. So here's the control line. See this line? Ignition control. That's the purple white striped wire coming out of here, the control going over here. So as you see, I put an arrow indicating this is an output. This is controlling something. This is an output. So an input is a sensor. The output is the control. And what do I mean by control? Output means this. He determines the action of something else. When he determines the action by turning something else on or turning something else off, like a fuel injector, that, in relation to him, is an output. He is controlling this. He's controlling the, uh, uh, the ignition coil, turning it on and off. There could be transistors in here. Not our concern. We don't care what's in here. We're just looking for a control. He's going to turn off the primary. When he turns off the primary, you get a collapsing field. And then that's induced into the secondary. And that's how you get the spark. But we're not, con we're not concerned about that. We're just concerned inputs and outputs. He's an output. You'll never see a diagram showing these arrows, which is going in and which is going out. All this is telling me over here is this is going to air conditioning system and this is going to air conditioning system. Do not use this again as an input or output. You'll get very confused. That will lead to wrong diagnostics. So, again, to the point, if I'm looking for idle air control, I believe I have a problem with the uh, um, idling, right? My RPM is too high or too low, depending on how cold it is and all that. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go to 
idle air control valve. That has to do obviously with the uh, the, uh, the idling and also the RPM, allowing air in into the intake. So therefore, I'm all, I'm concerned with over here these four wires. This is the same motor to go one direction and the other direction. It's bi-directional uh, motor. You can think of it. So I just wanted to show you the point. In the beginning, it looks intimidating. It looks like it's a lot of information from these computers. But you don't have to worry. Here's another point of the computer. Here's another one of the computer. If I'm looking for a crankshaft position sensor, I'm not worried. KS is a knock sensor. I'm not worried about the knock sensor. I'm not worrying about this is the computer uh, data lines that communicating one to another, the other modules. Not concerned about this. If I put my scanner and get a code, crankshaft position sensor, out of all these, I come to this part, I look for this symbol. This symbol tells me crankshaft position sensor. What do I do? Ignition is 12 volts. RF low is the ground usually. And this is a signal that's a feedback to this. Again, this is going back to this. So this is an input to this. Again, it will not show you the arrow. I draw in the arrows on my videos to make it simpler for you to understand as a beginner. But no schematic will ever tell you this is the input, this is the output. That's the challenge of being a mechanic, and that's the difference between being a mechanic and an emotive electronic diagnostic technician. Please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Um, thanks for the comment someone sent me about a comment about power seats. Uh, by mistake, I inadvertently um, erased that uh, email that I had or that, that comment. If you could download it again with the link to the uh, power seats, uh, definitely I'll reply to you as you can see I always reply to the comments that people leave, uh, people leave whether it's negative or positive hey everything is welcome that only can improve or enhance the the channel so thanks for watching and please look for my videos about how to test relays and circuit very important don't take relays out just use that technique that I used before thanks for watching